This video covers the basics for Universal Audio's Apollo interfaces and UAD Console 2.0 software. I will be using an Apollo Twin, but the principles apply to the entire Apollo lineup. First, you need to know that the power supply is lockable, which is great because it prevents you from pulling it, but there's a trick to it. So when you plug it in, make sure you go all the way down and twist. That's it. That's all there is to it. But now you can't pull it out, which is great. Then the Thunderbolt connection. And uh, let's look at the inputs and outputs. This is your headphone outputs. This is in case you want to record a guitar or bass. It's a high input. It acts as your DI. You don't need a DI. It's built in. And then in the back, this is for your microphones. You can have up to two microphones. Or you can also use these inputs since they are combo jacks. You can plug in a stereo keyboard in it. And then you monitor outputs for your speakers. And then this is an extra pair of outputs in case you want to do reamping or fancy stuff like that. And there's also an optical in if you want to extend more inputs. Today we're just going to do a quick vocal and show you how to set yourself up so you can do your vocal at peace and never have to deal with someone like me again. <laughs> so this is the UAD console 2.0 and I'm going to show you how it works because you will spend quite a bit of time here getting your tones. If you're using an Apollo or the Apollo 16, you'll see additional input channels and routing options. But again, the basic principles apply to all Apollo interfaces. This is an abstraction of what a twin can do. So these are your inputs, and this is your monitor section. On the input side, as you can see, two inputs. You can make them mic or line, as I showed you when I showed you the inputs. You can also do it here, by the way. You select preamp, and you can say mic or line. So you can really do it in a tactile way, or you can do it with your mouse. I like to do it tactile way. The cool thing also is that when you plug in your guitar in here, it knows, and it will switch automatically to the DI mode. You don't have to, to do anything. This is your monitor section. This is where you decide what you hear. For example, here, this is your main speaker level, which, by the way, you can also control from here, which is nice. And then here you can decide what you listen to, what sources you listen to. You can mute them. So basically, this is command center for the twin for what you listen to. Here, these meters here, you need to know these are output meters. This shows you what you send out of the twin. The Apollo Twin lets you use plugins in real time on your vocal while you're recording. Okay. So you've used plugins before you put you know, a little reverb on your snare drum in your DAW sure. and you go psh. So for example, say you're plugging your microphone into the Twin and you want to sing and you feel like you need a little compression, you can take your compressor, say for example an LA2, which is a classic for mm -hmm. recording vocals. Now this is going to affect your vocal in real time Without latency, no delay, you'll be able to hear yourself just as if you were using hardware, okay. but in software. Great. Here on the right, you need to know this. There's a box called insert effects. Insert effects are these effects right here. You have two options. You can have them just as monitor, which means that you only hear what they do, but it doesn't get recorded to your DAW. Or you can switch the record option here, it gets red, which means that whatever you hear gets recorded. So if you feel bold and you think you know what you're doing, you should record your effects so you don't have to do as much processing later. Or if you feel a little tentative, or maybe you just want to record a very clean signal and do the effects later, you have to be on monitor. So okay. you have to understand what this does. In console 2.0, you also have the option of setting the insert effect record monitor function on an individual channel by channel basis, which means that you can actually decide on an instrument basis whether you're recording the effects or just listening to them, which is very practical. So these are the basics. Okay. Um, let's do a vocal pass so you see how it feels in action. Okay. I'm going to plug everything back in, your headphones. And then these are for your monitors for listening later. And plug the microphone. And how do I adjust the gain on the microphone? Very good question. You have two options. You can do it the tactile way and you can do it the mouse way. Okay. Um, I like the tactile way. You hit preamp and then you can choose either channel one or channel two. And then you can choose your input to be line or mic. Obviously, this is a microphone. This is a condenser microphone, so you can use these buttons to kind of uh, choose what you want to do with it. For example, a condenser microphone needs phantom, so you can turn the phantom on. And then I recommend you use a high-pass filter because you don't need all that 30 and 40 and 50 hertz on your vocal. The high-pass filter will get rid of all the rumble at the very bottom, air conditioners, people walking above you if you live in Manhattan, things like that. And then for the gain, since you have this channel selected, just use the knob. Or if you're mousy, you can use the mouse. I use the knob. So you have your meter right here, and you can adjust your level singing in the microphone, 
looking at the meter, and then since you're economically well set, you can adjust your level while you're looking at the meter like this. Here's the way I like to think about um, the workflow. Switch to your DAW, put your track in record. The way I like to function is I like to make sure that my track, my background track, is at the right level. Okay. And then once I have that right level in my headphones, then I adjust my microphone gain. Okay. Okay, so let's do that. So put your headphones on. Okay. And as you know, this is your um, headphone control because you have headphones selected here. Got so it. you can set your track to go and pick your level. Okay. All right. Cool. Awesome. So now you know that you're comfortable with the level in mm -hmm. your headphones. And then now you can switch to preamp. And so all you have to do is press play. Okay. And you try. Hello, hello, hello. Testing, testing. All right, see a little bit louder. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Okay, that's good. Great. Right. So right now we're in monitor, which okay. means that compressor you're listening to, but you're not recording. Let's record it. And then... Let me show you how this works. It's a very simple process, which is why it's great for vocals because you're busy singing and thinking about your song. You don't want to have to have 20 controls. Peak reduction is how much compression you're going to use. And then gain is the makeup gain, actually. And I realize it's counterintuitive because we tend to think from left to right. So first you compress and then you make up the gain. But this is the way they did it in the 60s. And since these are very accurate reproductions of that sound and that look, that's the way they did it. So think of it this way. This is the amount of compression you want. And this is the gain after, if you need to add gain because you compress a lot. I, I recommend see. you do not compress too much. Okay. So what about reverb? What if I want to add some of that on? Okay. Good question. For reverb, there's two ways. You can put a reverb plugin right here after your compressor, for example. Okay. You can hear it. Yes. But that means it's going to get recorded. Yeah. Re okay. So uh, if I don't want to record it. If you don't want to record it. And add it later. You can use this console system. Okay. This is laid out like a regular console. So you have aux sans and then you have um, aux receive. Aux receive right here. Okay. So this is your reverb. It's on aux one and to you just send a little bit of it here. And maybe you choose a preset like say nice vocal. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Yeah that's good. Like that? Yeah. Okay. So either you put it right on the channel but then you record it since we are in record mode right here. Or you just use the aux send, aux receive system, and you just listen to it. Comfy? Yeah. Let's record. So I'll switch to Pro Tools when you, whenever you're ready. Okay. Gilded promises we never kept. When we touch, we easily forget. Raise the banners on these broken walls Turn back pages, erase it all Can we try a different reverb? Like maybe one that's a little bit bigger and fuller? Yep. Okay. So what you do, the well, first thing I would do is try a different preset because that's fast. So they have nice vocal too, let's try that. When you use a reverb in a sand return environment like this, you have to make absolutely sure that it's set to 100% wet so that none of the direct signal is part of the return. Some of these presets are not set up for that, so you always have to check. The other thing that would be good for you to check is the length of it. This is where the length is in the real verb, so check it out. you like the length of it right now? Hello, hello, check, check. Yeah, actually, that's pretty nice. Okay, if you want it longer, you can go here. Hello, hello, check. Check. I liked it a little bit before. Okay, okay. so we're going to go before. And okay. of course, if you want more or less of it, you could choose here. Hello, hello. Check, check. That's nice. Okay, great. Let me show you something else. They just came up with new technology called Unison Technology that lets you change the sound of the preamp. Right now you have a very clean, modern, super fast preamp, and it okay. sounded great. You can dig a little deeper and use some of old school microphone preamp emulations that they come up with. This one comes with the Apollo, it's called the UA610B, and that's an imitation of an old 60s preamp that sounds really smooth and very round. And so you can really model the sound of the box to your liking. So oh. how does this sound, for example? Hello, hello, hello. Oh, that's nice, actually, that's cool. That's okay, great. The great thing about this is you can shape the tone of the box to your liking. So for example, you could use, say, Unison technology and have this older, more vintage sound okay. for your lead vocal, All right. and then maybe use really clean modern no emulation for your background vocals. Okay. The other thing that's great about this is that 
the UAD console lets you take a snapshot. So I can take a snapshot of the whole console. Preamp, compression, reverb sans, reverb type, everything can be saved. So I can call this, for example, Amber Lead. Next time you want to track a lead vocal and you remember you like the sound, you just recall the preset, everything comes back exactly the way it was. And I could save like background vocal settings too. You could do that too, okay. which would allow you to switch back and forth between okay. lead and background in the same session without having to remember anything, which is pretty awesome. That's nice. Yes. Before we record everything, let's adjust the tone of the track. The twin will power the real-time plugins like we just saw, but you can also use the same plugins in your DAW. One of my favorite ones is the pull tech. I'm going to put it on your track. This is the emulation of a super classic EQ from the 50s, 60s. And there's no graph on it, so it can be intimidating. But the fact of the matter is, is you can't really mess up with it. It's really beautiful. It's that simple. You, don't, you can't look at it. You have to listen to it, which is the beauty of this plugin. Okay. I love this. Another plugin that comes bundled with the Analog Classics is the 1176. And there's two of them, and sometimes people get confused. So there's two. There's one called the LN. That's a great limiter. It takes a second to learn it, but it has a very special sound. It's a classic. They also have another version called the SE. Basically, these two plugins are emulating the same hardware. They're just slight differences in sound to allow for the SE to have more instances and you can use more of them without uh, taxing the DSP as much. What about the LA2 that we used before? Can I use that at the same time? Absolutely. You can use any plugin either in real time or in the DAW. So for example, if I want to add an LA2, I can add it here on your track and you'll notice that it's still active here in real time on your vocal. So you can both have it on your playback and on your real time. Let me get rid of all these compressors on your track before we record, otherwise okay. it'll feel funny. And uh, you ready to go? Yeah. There we go. Gilded promises we never kept when we touch, we easily forget Raise the banners on these broken walls Turn my pages, erase it all Don't you remember? We let it fall We let it crumble into I can't recall Don't you remember? It's nice.